Hello and welcome back. Well, today we're going to be talking about wireless technologies and protocols. And <clears throat> I know I put them together, but we're going to talk about wireless technologies and the protocols that we're going to be talking about, they are not necessarily wireless. But we'll go over the concept of protocols and uh, the most famous protocols that we have online, okay, on the internet. So let's get started. First of all, we'll begin talking about wireless technologies, okay? And for this, I'm going to give you one that we, hopefully, you know, you're very familiar with, that is Bluetooth. Bluetooth has really, really taken the market over. I remember when first Bluetooth came out, I used to think like, but who would want such a short range of transmission? You know, it's just so tiny, the, the, the range. And look at now, it is, it is, there are so many, many, many applications of Bluetooth. My Bluetooth is constantly in use, the one in my, in my phone, the one in my tablet. It's just a ridiculous amount of things that use Bluetooth. And it started just being like something really weird. And maybe you, if you think about it, you know, Bluetooth, so what's with that name, right? Actually, there's a story behind that, but I'm not going to go over that, but it's about a king. And that's how, how that came to be. But let's take a look at all the wireless technologies. So we have Wi-Fi, which stands for wireless fidelity, okay? And that is something that many of our children, aka my children, cannot live without. They are so used to having the Wi-Fi that if it's not there, oh, they will panic. Then we have the line of sight, and that's for infrared, okay? For infrared, we have the line of sight. Now, when we think of line of sight, that many times seems like really old school, you know? For example, when remotes, instead of being radio signals, we had the line of sight. So whenever you were using the remote to do something on the TV, you had to actually point to the TV. Nowadays, you don't really need to do that. In most cases, you really don't. But we're used to doing that, so we still tend to point like that. Even though we don't really need the line of sight anymore, what we're using now are radio signals that travel all around, no matter where you're pointing. But nevertheless, you see, all the habits die hard. So let's continue. So other wireless technologies, and now I'm talking about wireless technologies that go outside the house. We have microwave, and please, if we talk about microwave in this class, do not think of the one where you make your popcorn. It's the microwave communications that are wireless technologies to transmit data. We also have WiMAX, which is like, let's say, the big sister of Wi-Fi, okay? This one actually covers a city or a metropolitan area. <clears throat> then we have long-term evolution, which probably you have seen on your phone. LTE, and that is a cellular network. So microwave has been used for quite a while. And maybe you have seen some of, I, I remember growing up in Mexico, of course, that we had all those microwave stations because they, they had like, you know, like one station and then, uh, you know, further up there is another one and so on. So they, they, are, con they are not connected by a wire because they are using microwave communication. It's wireless. So as long as from one station to the next they can see each other, there is a line of sight and they can send the information via microwave. For example, MCI, the communications, is, is M stands for microwave, so they, they do micro, microwave communications. That's where MCI comes from. Then we have WiMAX, which again is just like a big blanket of Wi-Fi that it's covering a metropolitan area. So many times we have that with, uh, when we have some uh, devices that you can plug into your computer and then you just go online, you know, they are probably using WiMAX, okay? So if WiMAX is not there, you always have your cellular network to back you up. And in this case, we're talking about LTE or long-term evolution. But there is other ones, you know, you may be still in old school and being for, you know, 4G or anything like that, you know, we don't know what is your speed, but, you know, and maybe by the time that you hear this podcast, we're going to go way beyond LTE. So let's see. Maybe we will ask you, where are we now? What didn't we mention that was now famous and it wasn't when we were talking about that? That's quite interesting because things happen all so very fast. Let's continue. 
So we have also satellites, okay? And for satellites, let's think about the most famous and most widely used satellite of all time, which is the GPS, okay? Now, the GPS is a system of satellites that uses not one satellite, but three and sometimes four satellites to really triangulate, it's usually three, right? Triangulate where you are on Earth. And it's really, really precise. That's the one that guides your GPS and tells you where to turn right or left and the name of the street, you know? So GPS, uh, the, the group of satellites belong to the United States. However, anybody can use them. But, you know, other people are like, well, what if the U.S. ever decides to get down the GPS, which I don't see it happening anytime soon. But some people, you know, wonder about that. I, by some people, I mean some countries. So I know that some other countries have some similar satellite sets out there so that they can perform the same things as the GPS, but they are the owners of those satellites. And many times other countries, they just need to reassure themselves by saying, yeah, well, if they have it, why can't I just have my own satellite, right? And so they do, so they do. So let's take a look at other things that, you know, and uh, at components of satellite communications. So we have a couple of terms in here. The first one, you know, it's the uplink. And this is when you are sending data to a satellite, okay? So you're, you're sending it up. Uplink is because you're going from Earth to the satellite, okay? And then we have another key term, which is the downlink. And that's when you receive data from the satellite. So in the uplink you're sending, in the downlink you are receiving. For every satellite transmission, there is going to be an uplink from somebody sending something and then a downlink, somebody receiving something. Now, the ones that will use this kind of communication will be, for example, a satellite phone, which is not very common, kind of expensive, but you can use it anywhere because it will grab the signal from your phone, send it up into space and send it back where it belongs. Let's continue. So, as I was saying, we are always connected, right? Yeah, indeed. With the mobile internet, it's kind of challenging not to be connected. If you're not connected, you feel like something is missing, you know? Like some people are like, oh, I cannot leave phone, you know, house, the home without my phone because you feel like you're not safe. Well, the same thing happens with the internet. Just be careful and don't get addicted to the internet because if you do that, then it's gonna turn into a problem. Instead of helping technology, helping you solve your life and making it better, it may actually get it down, okay? So now that we have talked about all these things, let's talk about what actually needs to be done in order for communication to take place, okay? So what is the main thing that we need to use? Let's take a look at that. The main thing that we need is protocols. And a protocol is a rule for data exchange. I'm gonna give you an example of this. If you go to, um, to talk to a professor, Okay, you don't just go in there like, hey, you know, like yelling and, and singing or, or wearing a swimsuit, for example. You will never do that because the protocol mandates that you actually dress up when you go to college, right? And that when you talk to your professor, you're not singing and dancing, unless, of course, it's a dancing or singing class, right? Otherwise, you kind of go and, you know, talk seriously. It, uh, the best example for a protocol is, how would you talk to the President of the United States? You're not just gonna say, hey, dude, how, what's up, you know? There is certain ways in which you behave. Or the Queen of England, you will have certain behaviors, right? So, in the internet, there are certain rules that we follow but not just we follow, everybody follows. And those rules are called protocols. So that we know if somebody says a particular thing, we know what they mean and what they want, what they need and how it gets done. So those are procedures that need to happen for information to move from one place to another. Or protocols rule the internet. There is protocols for every single thing and some of them are, more, are better known than others. So, what protocols do you have in your browser? Well, you have seen HTTP, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. You have HTTPS, which is the same, but with the word secure at the end. So if you were transmitting something super, uh, 
uh, important, you want to use HTTPS. For example, if you are sending something to your bank or to the IRS with your social security number, you know, and things like that, you better check at the top of your browser that you are actually using HTTPS instead of HTTP. And even though these two protocols are very widely used, they are not even close to the main protocol on the internet. Let's take a look at that. The main protocol of the internet is TCP IP. And TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol. And what this does is that it uses IP addresses to know where the information is coming from and where it is going. And it takes it there. It finds a path for it. And it uses segmentation and reassembly. What this means is that if you have, for example, a big movie that you're sending, you don't grab the movie and put it all in the wire and it goes all the way out there. What it does is that it packetizes, it chops it into pieces that are manageable, and then it sends the pieces one piece at a time. When they get to the receiver, the receiver grabs all the pieces, reassembles it, and sends it to you. So you think that you're sending the whole movie, but in reality, they are little pieces. One important feature of TCP IP is that everybody that uses TCP IP, namely anyone that is online, anyone that is on the internet, needs to have a unique IP address. And that address is how you will be able to be part of the internet. If you do not have an IP address, you cannot go in there. You cannot hide your IP address, and your IP address can be used to find your identity. So be careful when you are out there.